Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa and I'm the owner of seasonandsurfblog.com. So sea starting season is upon us and today we are getting into the second seed haul of 2022, but today we will be talking about all of the different vegetables that I will be planting in my garden this year. And just like in my flower seed haul video for 2022, I have most of my seeds here with me today, but there are some varieties that I am still waiting on to come into stock or I'm waiting to order. So again, I will put the photos up on the screen for you guys um, just so that you can see what each plant looks like. And again, I'd like to remind you guys that this year I am working with West Coast Seeds as a brand ambassador, and I have included affiliate links to all of the different varieties of seeds and plants that I'm growing this year. And if you click on these affiliate links and you make a purchase, I will receive a small commission from that purchase at no cost to you. So if you do enjoy these seed videos and my gardening videos, this is a very great way to support me and my small channel is very exciting and a great way to support me as a YouTube creator. Okay, and with all that said, let's get into talking about the seeds. And I will be starting with more spring seeds first, and then we'll move towards uh, the summer seeds and fall seeds at the end. I probably won't talk as much about each of these seeds as I did in my flower seed haul video for 2022, uh, just because there's so many. <laughs> so I'm just gonna run through the categories, tell you the varieties, and a little bit about why I wanna grow uh, these vegetables in my garden this year. So let's start, I am so excited. Okay, so we are starting off with our spring seeds and these are things like radishes, asparagus, carrots, stuff like that. So they are either things that you have to plant earlier in the spring or they are just spring crops. So you're able to grow them and harvest them all within sort of that spring to early summer season. We're gonna start off with some radishes and I'm gonna grow three varieties. I have two on me today. So the first one is the French breakfast radishes from West Coast Seeds and the second is the Rito red radish. Now. French breakfast, I think, is just a gorgeous sort of staple um, to have in your garden. Um, even if you don't like radishes, I think just for decoration for spring, I think this is super gorgeous. And then the Rito Red is stunning. I grew this a few years ago and they turned out to be very peppery, although I think I left them in the garden for a little bit too long. But just that stunning bright pink color, I can't, like it's gorgeous. So these are the two varieties that I have with me today. I'm also going to be growing. Let's see the other one. Should I just get the book? Oh, I have two books. <laughs> Let me consult the Bible. I forgot what the other radish was called. Radishes, yes. So the other variety that I'm gonna be growing is called Easter Egg 2, and it is just a beautiful variety of radishes, uh, different colors. They are relatively all the same size, um, but they just look super cute and perfect for the springtime. So those are the radishes that I'll be growing this year. I will also be growing some scallions that have to be started in February and March. And the two varieties that I'll be growing this year is a standard one called IFL. These are really similar to the scallions that you find in your grocery store and they also brought in a brand new variety of scallion this year um, that we are doing a trial on and this is called red beard I think the red color on these scallions is super cool and I read in the notes on the back here that the red gets more intense in cooler weather so if you plant it in the early spring or into the fall uh, the red gets super super bright and intense so I want to see how these perform throughout the year so we're gonna grow some scallions and I've never grown scallions before however I wanted to try this year because the price of scallions has skyrocketed recently like normally they're about 70 80 cents to maybe like a dollar maximum for scallions at the grocery store but more recently they've been like two dollars two dollars and fifty cents and that can kind of really add up. So if you think a package of seeds is $3.29 and you get 280 seeds, it's kind of a no-brainer. So really great option if you have the space and you wanna try out some different varieties as well. Now the next veggie that I'm gonna grow is asparagus. And this is a variety, um, it's an F2 hybrid. It's UC 157F2. And this has an earlier production compared to other varieties of asparagus. And I won't be able to harvest asparagus in the garden for about three years because that's sort of how long it takes for the plants to get established and to be producing properly. But I am gonna be planting this year in 2022. So in 2025, 
I'll be able to harvest them. We'll have to choose a strategic spot for them though so that they don't get in the way of my other plants and my other ideas for planting. So we will see how we plan these out, but very excited to grow asparagus for the first time. Again, asparagus can also be fairly expensive, so we have some space and we will be growing this this year. Another spring crop that I will be growing is carrots and I grew carrots for the first time last year and they turned out so well. I was so impressed. Um, last year I did have very good success because we got um, new flower beds uh, built and we had new soil come in and the soil had a lot of sand content in it, which is really great for carrots because they're able to kind of push through the sand and grow the roots. Um, that's not always the case with soil. Sometimes it can be a little bit too compact or too heavy for carrots to grow, so they might grow a little bit wonky. But if you have nice and sandy soil, carrots are perfect to grow and they taste so much better coming from the garden than from the grocery store. So I will be growing the rainbow blend. Um, I think that's actually on the cover of the gardening guide this year, which is super exciting. And I'll also be growing a variety called deep purple. And I think the color for this just got me. I grew um, the same carrot, but from Bessie's last year, it was the same variety, the deep purple, and they were amazing. And they had like a little bit of orange orange tinge in the middle so if you grow them in the fall that is a very good um, Halloween inspired ingredient so very exciting and I can't wait to have carrots from the garden this year next up for some spring crops I'll be growing things like peas beans green veggies stuff like that so I have a whole bunch of stuff so I'm gonna try and hold them up one by one here but the first one that we have is the sugar snap peas from West Coast Seeds. These were amazing last year. We actually grew these last year on the trellis in our backyard. And if I can find a picture, I'll insert it here. But it was so beautiful. They had beautiful white flowers when they first emerged on their little vines. And then from that grew these really dense and hearty sugar snap peas. They were so good, so sweet. And every time I walked through the trellis, I would grab a couple and eat them off. They were delicious so definitely going to be doing that again this year in addition i'll also be planting some snow peas and this is some seeds that uh, my father-in-law passed down to me so he has an amazing garden in vancouver he's had his garden for many years and over the years he's sort of hybridized his plants and sort of bred them to be really plentiful and vigorous and the, like everything's amazing in his garden. So he ended up giving us some snow peas, so I will be planting those in the garden as well. I also have a lot of Asian vegetables that my father-in-law gave us as well to grow. So I have some bok choy here. I have a plant called a choy. I have a dark green variety and a regular green variety. Um, they taste the same, they just have a little bit of a different color. And I also have a huge Japanese bok choy. So these ones get a little bit bigger than your standard bok choy, but they are beautiful. So I will be growing all of those delicious Asian vegetables as well because we eat so much of these. So, oh wait, and I forgot my gailan. I will also be growing gailan as well. So another category of plants that you can grow in the springtime are plants called coal crops. And coal crops are things like broccoli and cauliflower that sort of thrive in the lower heat conditions. So they like the cool weather. And then you can also have that for a spring or summer harvest. And then you can plant those again in the fall. So I'll be growing some broccoli and particularly this variety is called the Asparabrock broccolini. And I love broccolini because it puts on these beautiful little shoots of beautiful like green mini broccolis and they are so tender and so good. So this variety was really great for spring and the early summer months, but when it gets into the heat of summer, they do not do well. So this is just a spring and a fall crop, but these were very delicious and I'll be doing that again. Additionally, I will also be growing some cauliflower and this is a trial seed called Trevi F1 and I think it is super cool. I can't wait to try this out. Okay, so next up we're getting into the warmer season plants and I'm gonna be starting with cucumbers because I am planning on growing a few varieties this year. The first variety of cucumbers that I have is a variety called Patio Snacker and these are very compact. You can actually grow them in containers um, either on your patio, your balcony, stuff like that. Um, I did try them last year. Um, I don't think I started them early enough, but they didn't really produce the best um, cucumbers, but that might have been like a placement issue, something like that, but I will be trying them again this year. Uh, maybe I'll put them in a sunnier spot. That, that was honestly probably the problem. <laughs> 
Um, I will also be trying out another variety, it's called Piccolino, and these are apparently very productive. They are mini English cucumbers, and I think that is gonna be super fun. So I'm gonna be trying out the Piccolino variety as well. So another summer crop that I will be growing is beans. And I have this package of beans from my father-in-law and these are some runner beans. So they are sort of a mixed variety. And I actually wanna open this up and show you guys how beautiful these beans are because they're gorgeous. So these are the beans. It's, I'm trying to like not have my face in the shot here, but they are so cool. They are all so different and have really interesting patterns. So I get a nice little variety with uh, these beans that I plant. So. These are going in the garden again, obviously, this year. And while I really enjoy those pole beans, you can't actually eat the husk or the outside of the bean because it is really fibrous and a little bit too tough. And you can just eat those little beans that come out of it. So I also want to add in some bush beans that are nice and tender that you can eat the entire uh, bean as it grows. So I don't have them here with me today, but I am also planning on purchasing the Maxibel filet bean. Um, they are sort of a French bean. They are stringless, which is very, very nice because nothing worse than eating beans and then you have that long stringy thing come out of it. Ugh. So Maxibel filet doesn't have that, so I will be growing that variety as well. Okay, so the next category of crops that I will be growing this year is probably my favorite, and that is tomatoes. So the first variety of tomatoes that I'm going to be growing is called San Marzano Lampandina too. And I grew these last year. This is a Roma tomato. They are indeterminate. And these tomatoes grew taller than me. I had to buy like extra big six foot stakes to actually stake them up. That is how well they grew for me. Tomato sauce is from these is absolutely delicious. So if you're looking for San Marzano's, I highly recommend this variety. So the next variety of tomatoes that I'm gonna be growing is called Black Crim. And this is gonna be my first year growing these tomatoes, but I have heard so many good things about them. They are like a larger tomato, they're indeterminate, and instead of um, being like a totally red tomato, they are red, but the top is actually brown, which is really interesting. So they are sort of like a fancier heirloom tomato variety, but I hear like the flavor on these is absolutely amazing. And really that's why we grow tomatoes is for the flavor. So I will be trying these out for the first time this year and I am so excited. Now, another larger tomato variety that I will be growing is green zebra tomatoes. I've grown these for the past three or four years. I've grown them in containers. I've grown them in the ground in my garden and every year they have produced amazing green zebra tomatoes. They taste so nice and tangy so good i just i always have to have green zebra tomatoes now because they are just so delicious and the color on them if you put this in a caprese salad it's like a next level caprese salad so green zebra tomatoes are going to be included in my garden again so the next variety of tomatoes that i'm planning on growing is called prairie fire organic and this was sent as a trial seed this year to the brand ambassadors and this is a very unique tomato it's kind of like aroma but instead of being a little bit more rounded at the bottom it looks to be a little bit more pointed which is very interesting it also instead of having like a solid red um, coloring it has like really nice yellow gold stripes on it so this looks really interesting um, it's a semi-determinate tomato which i don't think i've actually grown any semi-determinate tomatoes i think i've just been growing indeterminate tomatoes like forever but yeah, super cool, and I can't wait to try these ones out this year. And another trial seed that was sent out this year was another tomato, which oh, gets me so excited. But West Coast Seeds is now carrying pink brandy wine tomatoes, and this is a fancy heirloom tomato that I've seen a lot of people grow actually. But instead of being like a beautiful, like dark red color like normal tomatoes are, they have a really nice like pink color to them, which I think is really, really cool. So I can't wait to grow these this year. Um, I don't know where I'm gonna put all these tomatoes. These are just the large tomatoes, except for one, the one variety I don't have, yellow cab, and I haven't ordered these yet, but I will be planning to grow them in my garden because they are sort of the larger tomato varieties and they are yellow. So I figured I have pink tomatoes, I have brown tomatoes, I have red tomatoes, I have green tomatoes. I might as well round out the rainbow and have a yellow tomato. So. I will be growing those as well this year. Now, those were just the large tomatoes. Um, I am also planning on growing cherry tomatoes, and I have 
a wide variety of these as well to grow in the garden. So the first one that I have is a variety called Sweet Million and I think these look absolutely gorgeous. I think that, you know, in the fall months as they're still kind of producing, these would just be gorgeous roasted on top of some pasta or with fish. I think these are just amazing. I'm mainly growing them for their looks and that beautiful long stem. So I haven't grown them before, but I'll be trying them out this year and I think this will be really, really fun. So we'll be growing those. So another variety of tomatoes that I will be growing is called Indigo Rose. And these are super cool. They actually start out like green, like any other tomato, but slowly they get this like really dark purple color come over them and it is absolutely stunning. The flavor on these wasn't actually my favorite, but I think just for the color, it's, it's so gorgeous. So I'm definitely gonna be growing these again and hopefully the flavor will be better on them uh, when I plant them again. So I will keep you posted on that. Another variety of cherry tomatoes that I will be growing is called Purple Bumblebee Organic and I will also be growing the other variety, Sunrise Bumblebee. So the Purple Bumblebee is sort of like a dark red and green striped cherry tomato. Absolutely stunning such delicious flavor. I absolutely love the flavor on these ones. And then the Sunrise Bumblebee is sort of the same thing. However, it is red stripes with yellow flesh and these were absolutely stunning. They were a little bit more tart, I would say, compared to the Purple Bumblebee, but they were beautiful. So I'm definitely gonna be growing those again this year. And then the final variety of cherry tomatoes that I will be growing is a variety called Sun Gold. And this is sort of like an orangey yellow cherry tomato but I think that is probably my favorite cherry tomato that I've grown. It was so sweet. It was like eating like tomato candy. It was kind of crazy. I had three sun golds last year and I'm pretty sure that I ate probably like a pound off of each of those plants. Like they were delicious. I barely had any left over for cooking because we ate them all. <laughs> so those were a huge success and I will be growing those again this year. So that is it for the tomatoes and with just those alone that would probably actually fill up my garden if I planted multiple sets of each of them but holy moly I'm gonna have to very strategically plan where I'm gonna place my tomatoes this year. I know they love their sun, I know they love their water so we will see, we will see but I will mark my words make sure that we get all these different varieties planted this year so yay for tomatoes. Next up, we have something that's probably just as exciting as tomatoes, and that is peppers. And I have some crazy varieties that I'm gonna be growing this year. I think I'm gonna work my way from mildest to hottest, so you can see sort of like the range of peppers that I will be growing. So first up, I have a variety called Purple Beauty. I grew these in my greenhouse last year and I actually didn't have the best success with, with them. Um, I think just like the watering was very inconsistent in the greenhouse because we don't have any irrigation set up in there. So I think I'm gonna take a chance this year and actually plant them outside in the hottest part of my garden and see how they do. So I'll be trying out these again. I'll also be trying out another variety of bell pepper called California Wonder. And those are sort of just like the standard bell peppers that you buy in the grocery store. So next up on the heat scale is jalapenos. Jalapenos are standard. We always grow them in our garden just because they're so easy and they just love it. They love our greenhouse, they love our garden. Anywhere I plant these, they will be very successful, especially this variety from West Coast Seeds. It is amazing. I don't know what happens, but these, when I grow them, they're almost like serranos. That's how hot they are. So we'll be doing those again this year because they are just amazing. Next up is a variety of peppers called Phileas Blue, and these are just super cool. When I actually started growing these about two years ago, I just started growing them for the looks because they just look super cool, but they are actually fairly spicy. I would say they're on par with the jalapeno, not that much spicier than that, but as they ripen, they get a lot spicier. So they actually start out growing as this purple color, which is absolutely stunning. But in the fall, as the plant dies back, the peppers, if you have any left on them, they start to turn orange and then they'll go a bright red. So I think this pepper plant is really great to grow for food, but also ornamental purposes as well. Especially when it dies back in the fall, you have the purple and orange. It is absolutely perfect to add to bouquets for Halloween. I think that is like the coolest thing ever. So I'll be growing the Phileas Blue again this year. Okay, so the next variety of peppers that we're gonna be growing is some red habaneros. And I grew these last year in the greenhouse and 
they basically blew my head off. They were so spicy, but that is what I love. I love having spicy peppers and uh, the red habaneros have such an amazing flavor to them. It's unlike jalapenos, unlike serranos, unlike any other pepper habaneros are so good so i ended up cooking these i made some jerk chicken last year i also um, cut them up and salted them and preserved them just in like a mason jar in the fridge they are very good <laughs> and then the hottest pepper that i will be growing is the ghost chili and i know i said like the habaneros were hot but i am a glutton for punishment i love spicy food i love just heat in general like flavor heat not like the actual heat outside but but I'm gonna be trying to grow the ghost chili pepper in my greenhouse this year and I'm a little bit scared I am honestly very intimidated by this it is over 1 million Scoville units so we're we're not messing around with the ghost chili pepper <laughs> but I think it'll be really fun and I want to see how hot they are I don't think I've ever tasted like a fresh ghost chili pepper so we'll see we'll see how that turns out we might have to do like a pepper tasting a pepper challenge i think that'll be super fun so yeah we are trying these this year and hopefully i don't die now another pepper that i will be growing i don't think this is hotter than a ghost chili but i've never grown this i haven't even heard of this variety before um, it's called a bikino pepper and west coast East sent this out as a trial this year i had to look up the Bikino Red online because I've never heard of this pepper before um, but they're from Brazil and Bikino Red means little beak which is super cool I guess it makes sense because it has like the pointed end to it um, they can be joy they can be enjoyed raw or cooked but they are ideal for pickling I feel like I might have had these pickled I feel like I might have had these before so Hmm, we'll see. I'll try pickling them. That sounds really cool. And I'll try eating them raw, but yeah, those should be really fun. They're over just over one inch long in length. So that's pretty cool. Can't wait to try these ones out. Okay, moving along here to the next category. Another summer crop that I will be growing is eggplants. And I really like the Ping Tung Long Eggplant from West Coast Seeds. I really like this variety because the skins are really soft, they're edible, and they're not like hard like some Italian eggplant varieties are. So this one is really good. I also got another variety. This is actually from Stems Flower Farm. Um, I was looking on there for flowers, obviously, but then I also saw this really cool eggplant. Um, it's called White Star. And I've never tried a variety like this before. I've never had white eggplant, but I thought this would be a super fun experiment and I'll be trying that out this year too. Now we're getting into some summer squashes and this is the last like summer sort of category. I would say the rest of it is sort of fall plants, but first uh, summer squash variety we have is actually from Vessi Seeds. Um, it is the summer squash sunburst variety. And I grew four plants of this last year and honestly, I was drowning in these. You only need like one plant of these, maybe two, maybe two plants, but um, they're patty pan squash. They were super good. Um, I really enjoyed eating them when they were around like the golf bowl sort of size, but if I left them, they actually grew to be about like that big around, but they were a little bit tougher. So I really enjoyed eating them when they were on the smaller side. So I will be doing that again this year. And you know, West Coast Seeds also carries a variety of um, squash, just like this patty pan squash. Um, I think there's is a mix with like yellow and green ones. So when I run out of these, I'll definitely try out the West Coast Seeds ones after that. Another summer squash that I will be growing is called Raven Zucchini. This is just like a standard green zucchini from West Coast Seeds. And I had really, really great luck with this last year. So that'll be happening again. Another variety of summer squash that I will be growing is called Goldie from West Coast Seeds. And this is just a yellow standard zucchini variety. I really like yellow zucchini. It's just something like a little bit more special compared to green zucchini, which you can get basically like all year sort of in grocery stores nowadays. So I wanna try growing the yellow zucchini this year. All right, so now we are getting into like the summery sort of fall crops. And the first thing that I'll be growing is corn. Um, I haven't grown corn from seed before successfully. I have tried, but they didn't actually sprout. I think the corn kernels sort of got a little bit too much water and dampened off uh, before they actually grew. So 
I will be trying again. Uh, this is the Golden Jubilee corn from West Coast Seeds. We did end up growing corn last year, but I bought them already pre-started from a garden center here in Victoria, and the corn was so good. I actually cut a bunch off the cob and froze it, and we still have corn frozen in our freezer from the summer. So super cool, and I love how it looks in the fall. Just gorgeous. All the fall vibes with the corn. Speaking of fall vibes, we are now into our winter squash varieties and this gets me so excited. Any pumpkins, any winter squash, I'm just like, I'm all for it. So the first variety is a butternut squash called Early Butternut and this was actually shipped to me accidentally, which is fine, we're all good with that, um, but I will be trying this one out for the first time this year. And I want to compare it against a variety called Tiana. I actually grew Tiana for the past couple of years now, and these are so good. They grow a little bit smaller than like the standard butternut squashes that you see in the grocery store, but they are so meaty and there's not a lot of seeds. And that's kind of what you're after with butternut squash. So you want lots of meat, a little bit of seeds, and they last all winter. I actually still have a couple um, sitting in my back room that are still fine and perfectly edible still. So I will be doing my butternut squash again this year. Okay, so continuing with the winter squash, I am planning on growing a winter squash called Black Futsu. I got these seeds from Stems Flower Farm and I think the photography actually caught my eye. I think that's what normally happens with me and squash. I just see pictures of it and I get so happy. <laughs> so um, yeah, the Black Futsu looks super cool. I'm pretty sure you'll agree with me with this just by looking at the photo, but yeah, I'm gonna be trying that this year. And also I'm gonna be growing a variety called Tetsu Kabuto. Tetsu Kabuto. <laughs> and it's a Japanese variety. The color on this, I can't get over. It is so gorgeous. And again, the photography, the picture, and the color of it totally got me. But I wanna see actually how this tastes because I have no idea. I've never had this before. So we're gonna try it out, see how that goes. And another variety of winter squash that I'll be growing from Stems Flower Farm is called Autumn Frost. I think, again, this just looks so beautiful. So I had to try this out. I've never had it before and gonna try it out. So another squash that we'll be growing is a squash that we like to call taro squash in our family. My father-in-law gave me these seeds and the squash that he has grown from this actually kind of tastes like a cross between a butternut kabocha and like an actual taro root, which is super cool. The flavor is amazing. And I really like to cook it into soups or I even just like to cut it up and just saute it um, with some garlic and some black bean. So good, I could eat like an entire pan full of that. But this is a very unique sort of uh, squash. I've never had anything like this before until I met um, David and his family that grows this. So. I think this is really fun. I wanna eventually though find out what the variety is called, but for us, we just call it taro squash. All right, so now like a subcategory of winter squash is pumpkins. And again, you can grow pumpkins uh, to eat, but for the most part, I like to grow them for ornamental purposes um, for the fall and Halloween and stuff like that. And there's so many cool varieties that you can get access to nowadays. So I think it's really fun to grow pumpkins if you have enough space for it. Um, so the first variety of pumpkins that I'm gonna be growing is a variety called Moringa from West Coast Seeds. I grew some of these last year, but they ended up being a little bit too tiny. Um, I didn't give it enough water. I know that that was definitely my problem, but I will plant this in a spot where I have irrigation set up and I can't wait to grow these. They look so beautiful. And the only other one that I have with me currently is the Supermoon Pumpkin. These are beautiful white pumpkins and they grow about the size of a bowling ball. They can get pretty big. Uh, from one plant last year, I got four Supermoon Pumpkins, so that was very exciting. And I haven't eaten them. Um, I just use them as decorations and then I just compost them at the end of the season. But maybe this year I'll try eating it. So another variety of pumpkin that I will be growing is called Howden. And I actually saved some seeds uh, from the Howden pumpkin that we grew last year. I just don't know where they are. I, I think I know where they are, I just have to find it. But our Howden pumpkin, we actually got uh, from a garden center and we grew it in our garden. It only grew one pumpkin, 
but the pumpkin was 22 pounds. Like it was huge. It was bigger than our cat Pearl. <laughs> So I definitely want to try that again. Um, it grew really great in our backyard that's hooked up to irrigation. So I think I'm going to do that again this year. Another variety I'll be growing is the pumpkin pie pumpkins. And that is probably the only pumpkin that I actually like to eat. Um, just because the flesh is really good, it's really flavorful, and it's almost a little sweet, which is nice. So the pumpkin pie pumpkin is really versatile and it's really just like a staple in cooking if you're using pumpkin. So that is the pumpkin you use to make pumpkin pie, pumpkin tarts, stuff like that. So very good in pies, also very good roasted. So be doing the pumpkin pie pumpkins for culinary and edible purposes this year. And the final pumpkin that I will be growing is an ornamental pumpkin called Jack B. Little. Those are the little tiny pumpkins that you find in the grocery store around Thanksgiving and Halloween. And I just think they are so cute and I wanna grow them in my garden this year. I feel like it won't take up as much space as like a larger pumpkin, but we will see. Those uh, pumpkin vines can get fairly long so we will be trying those out this year as well so that is a wrap those are all the seeds that i'm going to be planting this year in 2022 i admit that this is a lot of different things to be growing in the garden and i do have a lot but over the years that i've been gardening i have kind of learned that instead of growing you know a lot of one thing it is really nice to grow a variety of different plants and maybe not doing you know three or four of each sort of plant maybe do one or two so you have a really great variety of things growing in your garden from spring to summer to fall so after this video, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of garden planning and I will show you that in probably one of my next YouTube videos. So that being said, if you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button down below and also hit that red subscribe button so that you can see more garden videos, how I plan my garden, how I plant it up this year and how I take care of it throughout the spring, summer and fall seasons. So if you're interested in any of the seeds or the plants that I talked about today and wanna grow them this year in your garden, uh, you will find everything linked in the description box below and again those are affiliate links so if you enjoyed the video and you want to show your support for me and my channel please purchase that through those affiliate links i would really appreciate it thank you so much for watching today's video and i will see you in the next one bye